This video looks at using trigonometry on the CR3 and CR6 navigation computers. The three most common trig relationships are cosine, sine and tangent. In normal mathematical calculations, the most common use of trigonometry is to calculate angles and dimensions of triangles. In aviation, it is also used in navigation computers that relate to things like the rotation of the Earth and is also used within the mathematical calculations of inertial navigation computers. A couple of examples of trig calculations in aviation would be given the ground distance to the destination and the altitude of the aircraft, what's the actual distance travelled during the descent? This type of question has been asked in some international exams or it could be a calculation of the distance travelled during a climb. Not the horizontal distance, but the actual distance through the air. Another type of calculation is if you are given the latitude of a location on the Earth, you can be asked to calculate the surface velocity due to the rotation at that location. Another possible calculation in some of the exams is to calculate the convergence on a chart. Let's have a look at the trig ratios. Basic trig ratios for right angled triangles are as we see on this diagram where we are given the angle here. The side opposite that angle is called the opposite side. The long side opposite the right angle is called the hypotenuse and the side next to the angle is called the adjacent side. The sine of the angle is calculated by dividing the opposite length by the hypotenuse. Similarly, cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent length divided by the hypotenuse length. And tangent relationships involve the opposite side length divided by the adjacent side length. Let's have a look at sine and cosine values. These vary from 0 up to 1 and are linked to angles that vary from 0 degrees up to 90 degrees. Sine values vary inversely to cosine values between 0 and 90 degrees. As an example, have a look at this particular diagram. I've got the angles from 0 up to 90 on the top line. The sine value is in the second line, so sine of 0 degrees is 0 and progressively increases up to a value of 1 by the time we get to 90 degrees. The cosine of the angle is 1.0 at 0 and diminishes to 0 by the time you get to 90 degrees. And so the sine of 0 is going to be the same value as the cosine of 90. Similarly, the sine of 5 degrees is the same as the sine of 5 degrees less than 90 degrees. And so I'll just let you have a look at the relationship as they are compared on the different numbers. As you can see, we eventually reach a point at 45 degrees where they're equal to each other. We can use the navigation computer to calculate these trig values. The wind side of the navigation computer allows us to do calculations of both sine and cosine. You'll see sine is labelled here in the white section and you can see angles and here in the black section you can see the cosine values. If you wanted to you could also calculate tangent values by getting the sine value and the, and the cosine value and doing a division between the two values. Let's have a look at sine and cosine values as they used on the back of the navigation computer. Our first step is to set the TAS marker directly underneath the 10 marker. The angles are on the inner scale. Cosine values are in this black band and are increasing from 0 up to 45 degrees. From 0, 10, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 and 45 degrees. Above 45 degrees you're going to have to make use of the sine numbers that are not highlighted in the black and these are these degree angles there. So let's have a look at the sine values. The sine value you can see are going from 30 back to 20 back to 10 back to 6 
back to four, three, two, one, and eventually back to zero. So these sign numbers are counting downwards towards zero, going around the inner scale twice. Let's start by looking at sign values and the way we would do the calculations there. In this case, we're going to start at zero, remembering the numbers go around twice, and we come around here to one degree, and one and a half degrees, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and we continue going around here all the way up until we get to 45 again. And so with the sign numbers, we have to remember that we end up going around twice. The first time we go around gets us up to about six degrees, and the second time brings us up to here at 45 degrees. For sign values that are greater than 45, continue counting upwards from 45 using the numbers in the sign band. And so for example, the sign of 50 is going to be 10 degrees more than 40, so 40, 45, and this one becomes 50. The sign of 60 is going to be another 10 degrees around, and so the sign of 60 is the same as the cos of 30. The sign of 70 is the same as the cos of 20. The sign of 80 is the same as the cos of 10, and so forth. By the time we get back to the sine of 90, that's the same as the cosine of 0 degrees. If we were going to do a cosine values, we would start here at 0 and read the cosine of 10, 20, 30, etc. to 45, and then we would continue to count upwards. And so it would be 45, this is 5 more, so that's 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, and so forth. The way we get the value of the sine or the cosine is to read the value immediately above the angle. One of the things we have to remember is that the value of sine and cosine has to be between 0 and 1. For example, the sine of 30 degrees, we find the sine of 30 on the inside and the value on the outside says 50, but it can't be 50 because the maximum is 1, and so that would be 0 0.5. The sine of 40 degrees, we read above that, and that gives us 0 0.64. Similarly, the sine of 60, we count upwards, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, and we read the value above the 30 there, and that gives us 0 0.866. The sine of 80, similarly, gives us 0.984. Or if we're doing a cosine, the cosine of 20, you read the value immediately above the cosine of 20, 0.94. Cos of 40, read it above it, and we get a value of 0.766. Or the cos of 60 gives us 0 0.5. The cos of 75, we'd count around 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, gives us 0.259. So let's have a look at some examples of the types of calculations that you might have to perform. You are on approach to a runway on a five degree approach angle. Now that's a bit steeper than normal. You're at a height of 2000 feet. What is the actual distance that you travel during that descent to the point of touchdown? And so here we have the five degree angle. Over here we have the opposite side of 2000 feet and we're asked to calculate the distance to touchdown along the hypotenuse. The relationship for sine is that the sine of the angle is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Now if we know two of these, we can calculate the third one. We know the angle, which is five degrees. We know the length of the opposite side is 2000 feet. The unknown we have is the length of the hypotenuse. And so we can substitute into our formula, and so it's going to be the sine of 5 degrees is equal to 2000 divided by the distance to touchdown. We find the sine of the 5 degrees by coming around here, 
in the white band and reading the value above it. The value has to lie between 0 and 1. And so when we read it, it's either going to be 0.87 or 0 0.087. Now because this is the first time we're going around, we would stop at 0 0.087. If we were going all the way around again to the 30, that would be 0.87. And so we can put these values in here. We have the sine of 5 degrees is 0 0.087 equals 2000 over the distance. Rearranging the formula allows us to swap those two around and distance is going to be 2000 divided by 0 0.087. We can do the calculation and we get a value of 22,989 feet. This translates to a little bit more than 7 kilometers or about 3.8 nautical miles. If you wanted to, you could have done that conversion of feet into kilometers or miles using the front side of the navigation computer using the conversion scales. A second type of question involves the rotation of the Earth. The Earth rotates at about 15 degrees per hour. It's a touch more, if you want to be precise, it's 15.04 degrees per hour. At the equator, one degree of longitude approximately equates to 60 nautical miles in distance. And so the Earth speed at the equator can be estimated by multiplying the 60 miles by the 15 degrees per hour, which gives us at the equator a speed of about 900 knots. Earth surface speed at any other latitude can be estimated. We can estimate it by using a formula which involves a trig function. The surface speed at any latitude is going to be 60 times 15 degrees times the cosine of the latitude. And so at the equator, the latitude is 0, and so the value of cos is going to be 1. And as we go towards the pole, it's going to reduce. So for example, at 30 degrees south, the surface velocity at the Earth's surface is going to be 60 times 15 times the cosine of 30 degrees. And so we go in and we find the value on the outside is 0 0.8660, multiplied by 15, multiplied by 60, gives us about 779 knots approximately. Another possible calculation is to calculate the convergence on a map. The formula for calculating convergence is that n convergence is equal to sine of the parallel of origin. So for example a Lambert chart has two standard parallels of 24 degrees south and 36 degrees south. The parallel of origin is exactly halfway between these two. And so we simply add the 24 and the 36 and divide by 2 to find out the average of those two values, which gives us 30 degrees south as being the parallel of origin. To calculate convergence at that particular location, it's going to be the sine of 30 degrees. And so we find the sine here on the scale here, 30, is going to be 0.5, and that gives us a value of 0 0.5 as being the convergence at that point. I trust this video has given you a bit of an insight as to the multitude of uses that we can put the navigation computer to.